guys, I'm back. Okay, we got a new video. So for all my procrastinators out there, I have pulled together the nine ways that I'm defeating procrastination. They've been extremely effective. These are life hacks and I hope that they help you. So I've been probably fighting procrastination for like years. I'm a person who gets things done. So I think at the, la at the end of the day, like no one notices, but I wanted to share the effective strategies <laughs> that I've found with you guys in case you guys battle it as well, because I've noticed so many people, so many people battle procrastination. But I think the number one question, the place to start is to ask yourself, why? Why are you procrastinating? I think for me, it's like fear of not performing well. And then also the other top one was just like, it seeming like a dreadful task that would take forever. But then you reach the realization that the longer you take to do it, that just gets packed on to the time. So it's like, you might as well just do it. Anyways, these are my nine tips or the nine ways that I am defeating procrastination. I hope these life hacks help you. Number one, just start. Just start, just do something. I'm gonna link this girl, Amy Landino, I believe is her name, uh, below. She has a YouTube video, she covers procrastination a lot. She mentioned just attributing 15 minutes to starting the project. And I thought that was such a great suggestion and it worked for me because sometimes you're just dreading it, dreading it, right? And then there's times I'm sure where it's just like a band-aid, you rip it off and you get started and you're like, oh, that wasn't that bad. <laughs> you waste so much time dreading it so I love that one as my first tip just start it give yourself 15 minutes commit to that do it and then take it from there number two number two is baby steps okay bite-sized pieces break it into bite-sized pieces so for example I love taking courses on Linda lynda.com this is not an advertisement however it is a really good site but I take online courses on there and at first glance it says like, oh, five hour course. So I'm like, oh, okay, you know, five hours is nothing. But then you find yourself like, okay, I can't find five hours to put aside to do this course. So what I started doing with that one is I broke it up into bite-sized pieces. And I think the key, at least for me, was breaking it up to something that just felt like, oh, super easy. So I did 15 to 20 minutes a day, like three days a week. And that felt like nothing. Before you know it, I was done. So I know some people might still be like, ah, oh, but I don't want to do that. I want to do just banging out five hours and keep it moving. And to that, I say, if you can do that, do that. But if weeks have passed or days have passed and you still haven't honored your commitment, whatever that is, even if it's a commitment to yourself, well, then you know what you got to do. Number three, theme your days. So this one, who did I hear mention this? I believe it was Shannon Boudrum. And... I thought it was such a great suggestion. So she themes her days. Say today she works on Instagram content, tomorrow she works on pitches, the next day, et cetera, et cetera, finance or something like that. I think that's a great solution for someone who stays home and can focus or has an office and can focus solely on their venture. But for someone who has a job, what might help for you is theming your weeks. I found that to be helpful in a space where you only have two hours after work to work on your stuff. It kind of interrupts the flow in the process if you're constantly like two hours and you jump to the next thing, two hours. It's like you never get to fully pour into any particular area. So will it really grow? You know, so I like themed weeks. Same example. This week you work on social. This week you work on editing videos. This week you work on pitches. And then of course in between, like, you know, maybe on a lunch break or something like that, you'll follow up and things like that. Number four. So sometimes people debate me on this. And I think what it all boils down to is what works for you. What works for me is reflecting on how badly I felt when I was procrastinating. And so what I ended up doing was recording a video to myself you know encouraging myself to do it and just reminding myself this is what you do not want to experience again now if you are a person who is more responsive to the positive you can record a video saying how great you felt when you didn't procrastinate both have worked for me it just depends on what the subject matter is whether or not i do one or the other but that's tip number four number five delegate if it is not your job whether you're at work or it's your own thing and you're not feeling like doing it and you're busy and you've got other things to do 
pass it on. Do not hold on to it if it's already making you feel crazy and it's not even your job. Tip number six, get it done early. Procrastination and stress live in the same family. So if you're someone like me where when things pop up last minute, you get kind of like annoyed, <laughs> anxious, overwhelmed, anything within that family, then getting the things done early allow for space for anything that might pop up. And when I say anything that pops up, like it could be something at work, it could be friends. For me, it was more so like, you know, friends wanted to hang out. I'm like, oh, but I gotta get this done. Get it done early, it creates time for it, and then you just feel better. Okay, number seven, take note of the places where you are most productive. So like for me, I'm a producer, a video producer and editor. So when I'm writing scripts, the best places for me to write scripts are on the subway and in the park, random I know. I get my best ideas when I'm going for long walks or I'm in the shower. But the theme with those things, or at least for the ideas, is no distractions and then just a good good scenery or a good visual for me, calming visuals. So if you can figure out the theme of what it is, what location you need to be in to be productive, depending on what it is you're working on, that's a major help. Number eight, I am a checklist and template theme. Organization is really the theme though. And I love templates and checklists. Like even to make this video, I did that because I don't like having to think about things more than once if I don't need to. So if I have a checklist, I can just easily refer to it. Okay, what's the equipment I need? Bam, we're there. Um, what, what items do I need to get when I'm recording? Bam, it's there. And I don't have to sit down and think about it again. And honestly, it just saves you time, which is amazing. Anytime you can save time, it's great. And then that's probably why you feel better when you have to do something and you have all these like checklists and templates to refer to versus having to start from scratch. The last thing I will say is batching as much as possible. So like for example with these videos I'm shooting three of them at a time because ain't nobody got time to shoot things individually. You know how long it takes to set up? Once again anxiety bills, we trying to fight procrastination. Those are the nine ways that I'm defeating procrastination. If that helped you please pass it along to your fellow procrastinators because this is something we need to get over like seriously like asap it is probably the thing that's standing in the way of you and your blessing and like once again ain't nobody got time for that so click that like button if you liked it comment below let me know which point stuck out to you the most and then share it and if you like this video you probably don't like this video so go ahead check it out because i'm sure it's got some life hacks that you need in your life thank you guys i appreciate y'all